Harlem residents are accusing the city of using the bait and switch tactic on them. They tell us what was built as a luxury apartment building almost 10 years ago is now being turned into a migrant shelter. We should have been informed. It's like they snuck in here. Executive director. So the city did sneak in here, but Harlem residents caught them, and what happened next is unbelievable. Heated moments at times as Harlem residents wanted answers. I'm looking for answers. Last week, she snapped these photos. Crews moving furniture into a vacant 35-unit complex. Harlem residents who attended the meeting say Harlem residents should be able to move into the property. Condos include kitchens with granite countertops and marble bathrooms. It even has an indoor swimming pool on its roof. These departments could be used for us to go into. We welcome migrants, but the way things are done is very important. There was no transparency whatsoever. With rents skyrocketing, Harlem residents say this could have been turned into affordable housing. Most people have no clue that in 2023, the best way to make money on Amazon is not with physical products. It's Amazon's other company, Audible. Audible pays me eight to $10,000. Here's the building. It's one of the nicest buildings in Harlem. And on the surface, this looks like a very poorly timed decision on the part of the city. And that's because the housing crisis in New York is worse than it's ever been in the last 50 years. And rents are so high that one out of every three New Yorkers spends half their income on rent. And that's why although the decision to give away luxury apartments may be hard to comprehend, it's important to understand that over 170,000 asylum seekers have come to the city, many of whom have fled extreme poverty, and the plan was to use this building as temporary emergency housing. But what nobody's talking about is this has exposed a much larger issue going on here in New York City. And before we uncover what that is, realize that there's already contention about how less affluent neighborhoods seem to be getting the majority of the city's shelters. According to this map up here in red, there are more shelters in Harlem and the Bronx than anywhere else. In fact, there's only one shelter in the Upper East Side and zero shelters in the West Village. Now, maybe Upper Manhattan is where all of the city's infrastructure that could be a shelter happens to be located. But one thing's for sure, residents of Harlem are not being quiet about what they discovered the city was planning to do in this building and in this neighborhood. with a parking garage. I'm looking for answers. Last week, she snapped these photos. Crews moving furniture into a vacant 35-unit complex, including boxes of twin bunk beds. They were seen through windows. So it appears like at the moment the city was caught, they were just days away from having this place fully operational. So according to a local realtor, this building is 35 units and 8 stories. And it was built in 2007. Check out the lobby. It was going to have a 24 24- seven concierge and the building's got a gym it's got a roof deck and there's even a pool that's like the hardest amenity to find anywhere in new york because it's the most expensive to maintain but even though this building looks nice there's a reason nobody lives here and it may have serious problems on the inside that nobody's talking about the building was first marketed as a luxury doorman building condos include kitchens with granite countertops but city records state its developers defaulted on loans and for a decade the building remained empty. So one thing that residents are confused about is how did the city get control of a building that was full of condominiums that were going to be very expensive? A recent investigation revealed that the building was actually leased to the city by a nonprofit, and the nonprofit rented this building from the current owners. The building ended up becoming abandoned when the developers ran into financial issues while building it, and the nonprofit leased it from the bank to fulfill their contract with the city. But these nonprofits are a little bit suspect. Another shelter the city's renting through a nonprofit might actually be dangerous, and it's owned by one of the worst landlords in the city. And the nonprofit running that particular facility had no contracts with New York at all up until 2022 when it got its first shelter contract for $4.5 million. And even though this building looks and sounds amazing, since it's been abandoned for 10 years, there's debate over whether or not it's even suitable to give to New Yorkers as a long term permanent residence. On top of that, it's been abandoned for so long that the pool and other amenities, which sound like luxurious probably are so old 
they can never be used and would have to be replaced if this were an actual apartment building where the units were selling for millions of dollars. But when local residents found out about the potential use of this facility as a shelter, they wanted answers, they scheduled an emergency meeting, and unbelievably, the mayor showed up to that meeting. moments at times as Harlem residents wanted answers about the city's plan for the vacant luxury residential building. An emergency community meeting called Thursday night after some alert residents snapped these photos of numerous bunk beds being delivered to the property. So as you can imagine, people that live around here thought it was pretty surprising when moving vans showed up and people started unloading furniture and putting it inside the building. It was probably the most activity that anyone had seen here in years. Mayor Eric Adams unexpectedly Unexpectedly dropped by the two hour long meeting and took questions from residents. Much of it turned into a large debate about the legal rules surrounding right to shelter, sanctuary cities, and the migrant crisis. So, if you're watching this and you think it's bizarre that New York City is housing people for free, that's called right to shelter. And that's been a mandate by a court of both New York City and New York State to offer free room and board to anyone who asks. It goes back to the 1980s. It was a court decision where homeless advocates gets sued the city and part of the reason why a luxury building was even being considered as a shelter is because the city's current shelter system is full in fact you can even say the city's shelters operate on a revolving door basis single adults can stay for 30 days families 60 days but after those length of stays expire the people in the shelter are moved out so someone else can take their place then they have to reapply for housing they may get back into the same building or they may end up at another facility and since the city's shelters are full they've got no choice but to work with nonprofits and use whatever housing they are able to find because it's the law and the interesting thing about that is even if a certain former 45th president were mayor of new york he would have to obey the law and he would have to carry out right to shelter so it's not something that the mayor ultimately has control over the city council on the other hand maybe we are not moving migrants and asylum seekers into that that place if you would discuss the plan on what we are going to do staff with the city's department of homeless services then spoke acknowledging the original plan was to use the building as an emergency migrant shelter, but said now it will be used as traditional housing for homeless families with children. Wow, so it's not a shelter, it is a shelter, it was a shelter, it sounds like the runaround, but you gotta give the mayor credit, he showed up, and this was a controversial meeting, and he knew he was gonna go in there taking fire. That's actually pretty gutsy, to be honest with you. I don't think most politicians would have shown up to a meeting like this. And the city told residents it had changed its plans for the property. And it very well might be that because of the nature of the contract for this place, again, the city has over 200 emergency shelters that it operates, and the mayor probably doesn't look at the contracts for each one. Somebody else at the mayor's office may have been responsible for getting this thing set up. And now this building is going to be used as a shelter for families with children. And these are families who are already in the New York City shelter system and i think that makes a lot more sense because that will be more of a permanent type living arrangement these apartments have kitchens so those families will be able to cook and you've got the park across the street it's not a great temporary facility because you wouldn't be able to take advantage of everything the building offers but what some residents are upset by is the fact that this new plan is plan b not plan a and some residents felt like their thoughts and needs were neglected even though people were only going to be living here on a temporary basis and it wouldn't have been as great as it might have looked for them at first because any family that would have moved in would have been moved out within two months but this entire situation has exposed a much larger issue in new york city and it's an issue that nobody seems to have any good solutions for with rent skyrocketing harlem residents say this could have been turned into affordable housing these apartments could be used for us to go into we welcome migrants but the way things are done is very important the, and when it's present or not so everyone understands that if a family makes it to this country and they come to New York asking for right to shelter, it's the law. They have to get a place to live, and we don't want to have people on the streets. But here we are in the middle of a housing crisis with empty apartments in a neighborhood that nobody can afford to live in. Right now in Harlem, the average rent for a studio is over $2,500 a month. Ten years ago, it was almost $1,500 for a studio, and here's where we are today. And that's for a one-room, one-person apartment. If you're a family, your three bedroom's going to run you around four grand a month, which means your household will need 160000 of annual income, which is double the median income of the neighborhood. And the issue here isn't that asylum seekers were going to temporarily live in a building with a most likely deactivated pool and a gym that they can't use. No, the issue is that there aren't enough apartments for anyone to live in. And for some reason, the city doesn't seem to be doing anything about it.
Introducing custom t-shirts. Sticker Mill makes it easy to turn any design into a custom shirt. Promote your business. So as you can see, not a whole lot of empty space to build new affordable housing in New York. But when a space is found, like potentially this empty lot over here, even in cases where plots of land like this are owned by the city and are designated for affordable housing development, no affordable housing development seems to be taking place and people are upset. These four affordable housing sites in East Harlem, all on city-owned land. Community Board 11 members started discussing them a decade ago. The city approved them three years ago in 2021, and today they are still years away from completion. Honestly, this is the saddest part of the story. We keep hearing about how we need affordable housing and how this is the year we're going to do it, and then... We just have empty holes behind fences in the ground. Every year there seems to be a new housing initiative, a new promise to New Yorkers. But the result is the same. Empty, empty, empty. But there are reasons why it takes so long for the city to build affordable housing and not as long for them to go and make shelters. Again, one is permanent housing, the other is temporary. There's different rules here. For example, the rules for a congregate style facility like the Randalls Island shelter aren't what you need for actual apartments people will live in for years. These are not permanent residents but whatever gets built in something like this would be. And in New York City, it's virtually impossible to build anything that's not already built. We wanted to find out exactly why it takes so long to get tenants moved in. The existing affordable housing development timeline takes a minimum of five to seven years and starts when the city gets community input and then requests developer proposals. After that, the city council must approve the proposal. What a nightmare. No wonder nothing's getting built. You've got years of proposals and requests and procedures in the city council. Council, it's like nothing is going to get done quickly this way. On top of that, when governments do eventually get around to doing things, there's a strong likelihood that they'll overpay for the result, or worse, the contractor scams them. That doesn't always happen, but definitely this is not an efficient way to get stuff done. And obviously, a much faster solution would be to get private developers in here who don't have to go through all the votes and procedures and little things that the city council would have to do. But then the question is, what would we build here? Would it end up being affordable? It's only one building after all, and it's privately owned. That's not going to fix the housing shortage. And that's why the idea of giving away free luxury apartments didn't sit right with everybody, even if they only would have been temporary for the people who got them. I think it's sad. I think the government is not really doing what they're supposed to do. The Adams administration wants to streamline that process with several time-saving initiatives. And among those time-saving initiatives, not requiring affordable housing developments to have associated parking, it increases the number of... So I'm relieved that the people involved in this process realize it's a big problem. But to be honest, the parking requirement's kind of bizarre. Here we are talking about affordable housing. New York is an expensive place to have a car, but there was still a parking lot mandate for some reason. Also, having a parking lot means you can't have as many apartments because the parking lot takes up a place where somebody would be able to live. But definitely the idea of speeding up construction is certainly a good one. And the city thinks it might be able to cut the time it takes to build something in half, which would be great. But in the meantime, rents are going up and nothing's being done. And unfortunately, some residents can't wait forever. They're being forced out. There are signs of progress everywhere you look. Affordable housing projects going up across New York City. But for millions of New Yorkers like Bronx resident Zulma Figueroa and her husband Monra, it was very difficult because of the prices. Their family's quest for housing stability remains rocky at best. So the real problem is that the affordable housing developments we have now, even if they're all completed, they're not going to be enough to keep pace with the city's population growth. And that means rents are going to pretty much go up no matter what. Unless the city decides to take drastic action, which doesn't look like is happening, and that unfortunately means that some families may not be able to stay here forever. The couple and their four children live in a two-bedroom apartment. It's what they were able to find and can barely afford. The money that you had to put down for the deposit, it was, it was crazy. After you pay your rent, do you find yourself 
struggling to take care of your other financial responsibilities? Yeah, it's a struggle. You know, when you hear stories like this, it's no wonder that people were upset that a vacant luxury building that had been sitting for 10 years was never considered as an affordable option for people who live nearby and who are struggling with the rent. And the fact that one in three New Yorkers spend half their income on rent is particularly concerning. That's because people who spend more than 30% of their income on rent may have a tough time affording other basic living expenses and they're considered to be rent burdened. Supermarkets, basic expenses, medical bills, car repairs, it all adds up, unfortunately. And even with insurance, the deductible could bankrupt somebody who's in a tough situation. Even getting to and from work, it becomes a challenge and a financial burden when your rent is higher than a certain percentage of your income. On top of that, in New York, even if you earn more money, like let's say you earn $100,000 a year, studies show that after you pay your rent and your other living expenses, you've only got about $36,000 of money left. That's insane. It's like you've got nothing. And the issue here is we just aren't building enough places for people to live. Also, even if the government doesn't build more affordable housing, there's an argument that allowing private developers to build more of what they think is a good idea to build, even if those apartments are luxury apartments, there's an argument that filling the market with ample supply of luxury apartments is going to bring down rents in non-luxury buildings and is going to help everybody else pay less rent. That hasn't happened, so I don't have any proof of that working in New York, but do you think that's the answer? What should the city do with vacant buildings that nobody's living in? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. The reason I'm showing you this is because this is hands down the easiest way to burn off stubborn weight fast. This simple coffee loophole took me from 184 to 123 in just weeks. And I want to share this with you because most women have no idea this simple weight loss hack even exists. You've probably heard that once you have kids, your body will never be the same. You'll have to accept the extra flab around your waist and arms, the muffin top that spills over your jeans, and the saggy skin that hangs from your belly. But what if I told you that's not true at all?